Okay, today we're looking at uh, two games. I uh, wanted to make this video because I think I actually lost a game through my decision making in the mid game. Not picking up, not picking up enough CS. In the second game, I literally only focused on picking up CS, right? And so this game, I had like 8.4 CS uh, a minute with Sivir. In this game, I had over 10 CS a minute, all right? And I want to show you guys just some interesting ideas. Not really, there's no real main focus for today's video except for the fact of how to maximize CS in basically a practice tool, right? Like this game, I could have had more CS in this game. I basically decided to just split push all game, all right? So let's take a look at what these look like. They're not really like... Um, What's it called? Games to really copy from, but just my insights on what I think you should be doing as an ADC in this season, right? Uh, so let's take a look at uh, this game. Let's fast forward to the mid game. We had a really poor start in lane. And uh, I want to walk through the decision making here and what I think I should be doing in this game. Um, so from my perspective, in order to be useful on Sivir, you need to get to some critical mass of items, right? You need like uh, probably like three crit items and like a death's dance something along those lines like essence rapid ie and death dance sounds like ideal you can start carrying the game right so i think the objective is unless someone on your team is going to win the game for you you need to win the game for yourself right so every time you can make money and get away with it you probably should make money and get away with it right so that's kind of the theme of this game is gonna be parts where I could have made money, but I didn't, right? And I want to actually kind of show you guys uh, the mistakes I'm doing to see if you guys can see similar ideas in your game. Cause I think this is a pretty common, um, pretty common idea I think in any ELO really is making the decision between making money and not making money. So here, obviously you're pushing a side lane, right? To maximize our income, right? Uh, I think the interesting parts come when there's decisions to be made on the map versus like helping a team versus not helping the team. So let's fast forward and see what we have here. So here we see already basing. So we want to go pick up the mid wave. We can also pick up the scuttle, right? This is all standard money making techniques and already is going to go bot, right? Once, uh, once uh, I go mid here and we see that Fiora is getting uh, ganked top, right? So one way to decide if you should go top or not, I'm going to make a video on this uh, sometime soon TM, but I think it's going to be a really important habit is called like, if you show up, basically, can you win the team fight as a team, right? I'll call this the main character idea, but basically it's if you go top, who on your team can carry the fight, right? So I, I like characters. So if I go top, it's going to be me, Fiora, and Senna. Okay, out of these three, who can carry the fight? No one. So you shouldn't go because there's no way to win, right? So instead we push mid. Of course, it's really easy to decide because uh, we're already too far, right? But I think if even if we were closer, I would decide push mid, right? Because there's no way we can go out top and get anything done, right? So, okay, we made some um, some decision making here to grab an, a wave of farm. And then here, since she died, we're going to go cover top, right? Making sure we ward our jungle to see if they're going to do anything sneaky. We know there's a pikes, pikes here. Uh, I probably don't have to ulti here. Uh, I've already watched this replay, so I know a bunch of spoilers. But here we catch a top wave, and you'll see that they popped the Rift Hero mid. Shivana was doing Rift Hero when Fiora died, right? So they popped Rift Hero mid, and I'm saying, oh, since they popped Rift Hero, we need to go and defend the Rift Hero. That's usually standard practice, right? But here's where the interesting uh, de decision comes into play. There's a second wave at my tower. So the question is, if I go mid here, what will we accomplish? Right? So if you take a look at this picture, it's always a decision of going to go help at the cost of farm, right? Because if I go help, if I go mid now, I'm going to lose the top farm. So if I go mid, I must change something. something. Something must, like, I must be able to stop them from doing something for me to show up. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, for example, if we go top to help Fiora in the 3v3 and no, no one on the team can carry the fight, it doesn't make sense because you guys couldn't change anything, right? So if I go mid here, I better be able to defend the mid tower, right? Or the inhibitor tower. There's only there's really only two choices. Do you think they're gonna go? Do you think you can stop them from taking the second tower or the inhib tower? Really, right? So we're like, okay, we gotta go now. It's usually standard play when you see rift tower is go immediately to stop them from taking everything, right? But you will notice that I showed up and we couldn't stop them from taking the tower anyways. So doesn't that mean we should have gone the extra wave top, right? Something tells me that. I could have gone another wave. Remember, our win condition, one of our win conditions is me becoming critical mass so I can actually do something in this game. 
And what do we say? That's literally Essence, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire, and a Death Stance. Look how far away I am from this, right? I should be focusing on making money. And defending our towers is kind of a way to make money so that, you know, they don't just end the game. But I came to defend this tower and there's literally nothing to be done. It's the same three people. It's going to be Fiora, Sivir, and Senna. We couldn't stop them from taking the tower. So I think in this case, I should have cleared the top wave and then come if they were going for the inhibitor tower, right? That's my theory, at least, right? So all this is like happening and obviously we can't do anything because look at our champions, right? And we do end up breaking, we end up killing the rift tower before it slams into our, uh, into our inhibitor tower. So this is the question. If I had stayed top and gotten two waves of farm versus rift tower hitting our mid tower inhibitor tower once, is this worth, right? I would also get the solo XP. I think I should have decided to push top. Right? I don't know about you guys. I don't know what you guys think, but from from like a VOD review standpoint, me being here mid is not really changing too much, except for the fact that we killed the Rift Herald before it slammed into our inhibitor tower. And don't get me wrong, like having a healthy inhibitor tower is good, right? Remember the inhibitor tower, I think, if I recall correctly, is split into thirds. So like if it dips below, you know. Uh, like if, it, if it's anywhere with this amount of health, it's going to regen this health, right? And if it goes below the second third, it's going to regen up to the second third health, right? And then, you know, last third, right? So we saved inhibitor tower health, but at the cost of Sivir losing two waves of farm, solo farm and XP. Is that worth? Is the question. I don't think that really makes any sense here. And again, you'll say, you'll, you'll notice that, hey, you know, maybe if you're mid here, you can get to the dragon faster. Right? But that also doesn't make sense to me either because if we show up at the dragon, again, who's going to carry the fight? Is it going to be Sivir with no items? Senna, who's like behind? Kane, who's behind? Fiora, it's, it's not Oriana, she has no ulti, right? So I think we should have just been pushing top all the way and get the tower, right? And just literally eat as much farm as possible while they're doing the dragon and pushing mid, right? Because that's, uh, you know, getting our win condition, essentially. We need, we're, we're, we need to make money or we're losing the game, essentially. Look at this. We're, like, literally not making any money. Like, we really didn't accomplish anything by coming mid, I think. Obviously, we're not going to stop the dragon, right? There's literally no way for our team to contest. So, but, okay. I think we lost, like, three waves of farm and the top tower for nothing. So that's actually really important because I had 21 to my CS score, and it's looking a lot better, right? We're, we're getting closer to our four item spike that we need, right? But let's keep going. Let's keep going. So it's like three was a farm in a tower, I think, from from decision making standpoint, right? Like if you go, you need to get something done, and staying in your lane to push is like getting something done already. So if you go, you need to you need to make something happen essentially. So here we're just pushing mid, right? Uh, standard, standard, standard. We have like Oriana. We can fast forward instead of like doing this, but uh, we have like Ori top and and Fiora bot, and we see Shivana top so we're like okay we can force mid or we can get mid prowl because their carry is top right so they can't really do anything mid here and then uh pike does some like super in play so we get to kill these guys for free so we get to push this and then here's the interesting thing here so someone's gonna go pick up that top farm since siobhan is splitting right so here it's gonna be oriana but let's say oriana went bot should i have gone top probably right we still need to make money but let's say uh, uh, the decision was made easy for us because Ori went top that was really good right so here we're coming to secure this akali kill here's the second interesting decision in my in my head the second interesting interesting decision here when we're doing this and they just cleared mid this second wave is coming in right and right here this guy is dead whether or not i have any say in it he's either getting away and we can't do anything about it or he's dead and i can't do anything about it so here's the second thing should I be pushing, should I base and cover mid here? I think I should. That's another wave of free XP and gold that I could have gotten that I otherwise cannot get if I just chase this. I actually just don't do anything here. We just watch this dude die. And then we still don't base. We lost a wave mid because Karma's pushing, right? So I think the moral of the story is we need to show up if we can get something done, like cut off a Kali. And then once our job is done, we need to go back to making as much money as possible. Because... We got the we got the rift herald sure, but my king could have gotten the rift herald, and we lost. So we lost our team. Lost a wave mid, like the team. That could have been Oriana's wave, could have been my wave, could have been Fiora's wave. So like the team's losing money somehow, and I didn't do anything. That's six minions again. So we lost four waves so far in this game that I think we could have picked up, right? So again, okay, sure, we push we push mid here, right? Back to the usual, uh, easy decisions, right? 
Uh, sure, sure, sure. Let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, we think our top side's gone, so we just play low safe here. Uh, of course, no one on our team can really do anything because you know they're no ultis. Oh, this is I remember this. They're gonna they're gonna Baron throw soon uh, for some reason. Okay, we're just gonna keep clearing mid. No real hard decisions to be made here, right? Just fast forward a little bit. And here I'm doing Wolves, taken from Kane, because I think I need to be the uh, win condition of this team, basically. Me or Fiora, or some massive Oriana ulti, right? And we see that Shivana has uh, cleared the Baron. So we think that she's like starting it or something, like potentially starting it. So, or use her uh, boot chain and they saw they're starting. So I was like, okay, this is, I think, what a good decision looks like from me. I know that Shivana got spotted. She knows she got spotted. So she's going to pull out. She's not going to, she's going to stop doing Baron, basically. Because our whole team is coming, right? So until I figure out what's going on, I should push the wave mid, right? To get the solo wave XP. And this is actually interesting. Is it, should I be pushing it or should Fiora be pushing it? Because Fiora is coming up to help the Baron, right? I think a lot of people will say either way that, yo, you could be here and helping them while you, one of your carries is getting the mid wave or you could be pick up the wave and go when you figure out what's going on. I actually don't really know what the answer is here, but I just decided to default push mid. And then we see that, you know, some kind of fight is breaking out and they're off the Baron. So uh, I think they int here. Yeah, they, they giga int here and then we kill everyone, right? We don't, we don't really need to see this. It's not really important, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it's interesting, I guess. Akali's coming from the side. We're denying her R1 with flash, sure. This is just pretty, pretty, just pretty standard team fight. I think the interesting stuff is once your role in this team fight is over, how do you make money, right? So here, of course, team wants the Baron, so let's go Baron. But more interestingly, can we push top? They need me on the Baron, so we can't go, right? But the fact that you can like consider this kind of stuff is, I think, important. We need to do Baron and go Dragon, so obviously we can't go push top. But the the the, the idea that the fact that I didn't even think about this in the game is worrying because maybe in some situations the Baron is free because you have like people who can kill the Baron without you, and you could be making money because your job is done. So you need to go. You need to go. You need to go to your other job, which is scale faster, right? So here we need to deny their soul, so I ran straight to Dragon. There's gonna be another fight that we can kind of like skip past, but I got the push mid again. So, so far we've collected a lot of waves, right? We've kept the status quo, but we remember we did lose four potential waves of farm. And I am two levels up on Ezreal, but imagine being three levels up, right? We need, we, remember, we say, we say we needed like four items, right? So, uh, let's just, uh, I guess we can play this, but here we could say like, you know, we need to keep control over this dragon, so we can't really go by here. I think that's fair to say. Us being here does indeed make a difference with our ulti, exhaust, our presence, you know, whatever. We definitely need to be here for the fight, I think. So going by is not really an option. Uh, unless you think you can go by and get away with it. I don't know. I don't think so. They're going to push mid, right? So I think we need to we stay here and do the dragon. Here's the, uh, the third interesting decision of the game. Okay. We just secured the dragon. It's really hard to chase these guys, right? I think Shivana is about to get ulti. And Ezreal has three items with Muramana and Akali style's ulti, right? And our team... Who's the main character on this team? Uh, uh, Kane can maybe carry this, and Fiora can maybe carry this, right? So instead of chasing them, we can push bot here, right? He, he tried to start a, a 5v3, but I don't know. It, it looked really dicey. So here, we could be pushing bot here, right? That's another wave of farm that we could have picked up here. So maybe instead of basing, I could push and then base, right? Push into tower. Because if you don't pick up that wave of farm, it's going away. That's like five waves, potentially. It doesn't take a long time for a server to push. I just show up and hit it twice, and it's gone, right? This is, this is the, 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 the parts that are getting me, I think, that I'm figuring out is between, like, during the times where you need to help your team, there are times where you can look to pick up the extra income after you've won a fight or after you've lost a fight. Look, we, our team lost a wave of farm. That's five waves. Five waves of farm. That's literally 35 CS that I could have gotten. 35 solo XP and income that I could have gotten. Like, that is, is that not closer to my four item spike or what? Right? Remember, the ultimate goal is for one of our win conditions to be activated, like Giga Fiora split push or uh, Sivir six item, right? What else is there? Uh, that's pretty much it. I don't know. Maybe Oriana faker, faker mode six item. Uh, that's probably not happening in solo queue, right? So it's one of, it's me or Fiora. We need to be the ones making as much money as possible. So I think I lost another wave of farm there, guys, right? From my perspective, it seems like, oh, we could just Baron base and get on the map faster. But I could also take two seconds to push bot and then Baron base and get on the map a little bit later. But I got six minions. That's that sounds that sounds good to me, to be honest, right? Okay, we're getting more farm here. That's fine. This is this is pretty standard. 
Oh, this is another interesting decision. You guys, uh, you guys will probably find interesting. Uh, so we have Baron here. So our strategy is four one, which is uh, uh, we have four people mid and we have Fiora splitting, right? So I think the idea is Fiora is going to win the split by herself, right, with the Baron minions, and we're going to pressure the mid tower with the the Baron cannon, right? Or maybe Oriana zoning something along those lines, or maybe center catching someone. But but basically we're going to try and sit mid until we can find a crack in their defenses, like uh, Fiora getting the tower, for example, or uh, or catching someone, or the cannon just hitting the tower a million times, right? We see, uh, we see uh, Shiva on top, so we're looking for something in their bot side jungle. And I decided to dive this Akali. I saw that Fiora was winning. So I wanted to dive her here, right? Our other option is staying mid and sieging with the team. Now, let's watch this because I think it'll be interesting for you guys. But I thought this was a free av dive. And it turns out it was not free. Spoilers, it was not free. And I, I don't really understand... What made it not free, except for the fact that we just could not kill Akali, right? I came so we could kill Akali, we did not kill Akali. This is really grief. We actually threw the game here, I think. Uh, so maybe this is one of those things where... Remember, if you want to go help your team, you showing up has to do something. So I cut off the Akali, but we couldn't kill her. Right? Because she's uh, she ultied away. That may be something to, that's interesting here is... You know, we did cut her off, but she still got away. Right, so against like these side laners, like um, like uh, a classic is Camille. You show up, Camille is away. That's really obvious. It should be the same with Akali. I think that's something to consider when I show up to try and dive her, right? Because this actually became a super int. Not only did we give away a shutdown, I didn't make any money. We lost the Baron. We lost Baron Temple. Like we lost our Baron buff basically, right? Um, Fiora died. Yo, that's a fucking disaster, honestly. This is actually really bad by us. That's actually really interesting. It's it's basically. Decision making in terms of, uh, in relation to you showing up, get something done, versus farming, I think, right? Because, I mean, honestly, AFKing was better than inting there, or going top was better than inting there, or staying mid was better than inting there, right? So, uh, just, some, just some interesting examples to show you guys. I probably should have stayed mid, I think. When in doubt, I think the answer is farm and take the consistent path, right? So here, okay, this is actually another interesting one. So if you, if you see someone top, Right, like there's Shivana, and she has no TP. You want to force with your man advantage on this side of the map, right? So how does our team force? This is an interesting, interesting part here. Is we force with our man advantage using Civerty, right? Kane is going in, but really the playmaker is Oriana ulti or Fiora diving, right, guys? So that's the team's win condition in this four v in this five v four is one of these two things. So the problem with this. Is that Oriana can't is not we're doing some stupid shit when Oriana can't ulti anyone here. And no one's going bot for Kali. So what happens if this is why split pushing is so effective, is because if the team that's getting split pushed on doesn't figure out what to do in time, they're just losing farm top. Right? So we couldn't figure out what to do in time. So here's a here's another interesting thing is I should just go top here. Once you realize that this is not working. You should, again, you need to go pick up your CS, right? Because again, you know, we need four items. We're st with two and a half, not even close. We could be picking up that top wave, right? Remember, we lost five waves of five waves of farm so far. And Shivana shoving that into our tower, that's another two waves. That's seven waves that we could have picked up. So us forcing mid, we should look to force. But remember, there's a certain way to force. It's not just running at them. You need to get something done. Like Oriana Oting. Uh, Kane ulting, Kane diving bot, anything like that is probably could be winning. But if you can't find it, you need to go and stop the split push. You need to go pick up that wave, right? I think it's five waves. Five, six, seven, seven waves. Literally seven waves of fire. Henry, thank you for the uh, six months. Oh yeah, we're doing us on stream, by the way. Uh, we got Twitch chat. We got Twitch chat here with us. But um, yeah, there's seven waves of farm that I could have picked up if I figured it out during the game. Imagine if I had seven ways of farm here. Is that not infinity edge? That's actually infinity edge here, right? It's really important for you to scale because you pick the champion. Well, you're playing a role that requires items to do anything. So why the hell are you not figuring out how to make more money? In fact, that's not seven waves. That's eight waves. You could have pushed that out and come, right? That's actually eight. That's three waves, not two waves. That's three waves. You could have pushed this one out, right? Nine waves, it's something's bots going on and you push all the way to the tower, right? That's actually like, nine waves i mean i picked up the wave here so maybe it's not like a, a difference of nine waves but uh it's at least eight waves i would say right but here i think i made the right decision right first time i made a good decision i think in the mid game 
where Fiora dies, there's no way to stop their soul. Like, the only way is like a Orianna four man ulti or like a, a cane steal that leads to all our deaths. There's no way. We gotta go farm instead. Yeah, I think this is a really correct decision to not try and contest the soul 4v5. The only play we have is the ulti. There's no, they just flash it like there's no way to win, right? So I think going top here makes a lot of sense, right? Um, honestly, they just, they just, we couldn't even get there in time. Shivana just ate it alive. So I think we actually got to pick up these waves. This is really good, I think, right? So, so far, only seven or eight, well, I say only, but we lost seven or eight waves, right? And here we push out top again. They're not doing anything mid. And uh, here you'll see that they, they chase us. This is actually really good by us. They... For, to them, they need if they can kill us, they get Baron because we're right next to the Baron, right? So they're gonna Giga Force on us. So here, I was saying, you know, Shivana. I saw Shivana ulti, so my ulti for Shivana ulti is really good, since uh, Shivana ulti is literally like their one of their main carries. So if we can trade ultis, that's fantastic, since my ulti is not as important as Shivana ulti. And here they're just like forcing on us, so uh, you know we're just kiting it out. They just they just Giga grief there. She flashes on me, I exhaust her. You know, nothing too crazy here. Um, but let's also talk about the main character habit because in this uh, in this occurring five v three, you're about to see you can you can tell who's gonna lose from this picture. We're gonna lose from this picture. Why is that? Because our team only has one thing to play for, which is Oriana ulti. I'm pretty sure this is like the only thing we can play for uh, against like Ezreal and Akali, who has ulti, right? So if you watch this, it's kind of grief that we're all chasing the Ezreal, right? Is uh, Fiora, what is Fiora supposed to do without ulti? I don't really know. Like, you can watch her. What's Kane supposed to do without ulti? I don't know. You can watch him, right? Senna, same thing. Me, same thing. I mean, I'm trying to, like, hit people, I guess. But, like, there's, we, we always lose to Ezra here. 100%, right? Which is, in fact, kind of what happens. Could have spoke shooter, but, like, doesn't change the outcome, right? So, I think it's really important to recognize what are we, as a team, can do based off your main characters, your carries. The people who have ulti, like, the people who can get something done. You can tell who's gonna lose this 5v3. This is actually the same. This is actually the same picture as the dragon 5v3. Remember, we got the Baron and went straight to stop the soul. That's a 5v3 right there. We backed off because we only had Kane ulti, and it didn't look like we could do anything chasing. And they still had Akali ulti and Ezreal and all that stuff, right? This is the same thing, except later in the game, right? So this is kind of grief by our team. I think this is actually really uh, important to look at uh, in terms of telling what you guys can and can't do as a team, right? For example, if we didn't fight this. We could, you know, base and then go pressure the Baron, something like that, right? But okay, um, unfortunate decision, but sure. Uh, sure, you could say you could have picked up farm, but honestly, if your team's going in like that and you base, you're going to get flamed to shit. So you just got to spam, spam back ping, recognize and spam back ping, right? And, and escort them out. Uh, here we're clearing mid, so we're getting on this farm, sure. And we reached, this is the end of the game where I int here. Uh, I can tell, I can explain how I, <laughs> I can explain how I super int this, but uh, so far we've lost... Eight waves of farm, if I counted correctly. Eight waves of farm I could have picked up. That is literally, i.e. Essence Rapid Fire Death's Dance, is it not? Right? Eight or nine waves of farm is literally what I said was our ring condition. Right? I would be level 17 as well. Right? That's actually, that's actually our ring condition. And us being down an item here for no reason other than poor decision making is not, not really acceptable, right? As an ADC. Uh, I'll show you how it here is kind of sad, but... Uh, the thing we're playing for as a team is the Oriana ulti, right? So I, I'm trying to bay for Oriana, but I'm just fucking, just fucking running it down. <laughs> yeah, don't watch. That was really stupid. Uh, if I wanted to do this, I should have uh, waited for Oriana to be next to me so that she can actually ulti people going on me, right? Uh, we saw that Shivana had ulti, so I thought this is a perfect time to go. But uh, we need to be next to Oriana if you want to do something like that. To play for the Oriana ulti. This is not... Uh, this is kind of playing for it, but it's just straight ending, to be honest, right? Uh, actually, did I get hit by something here? I, I spell shielded. Oh, I spell shielded Shivana Smite. Oh, that's fucking tragic. Whatever. Um, that was a good game. But the takeaway is uh, when to help your team versus making money. And being able to identify when to help your team is based off of what your team can do if you show up. Does anything happen if you show up? Right? Like Rift Herald. You stop them from taking inhibitor if you show up. Right? Or... The, uh, uh, the Akali getting dove by Kane and Fiora. Does anything change if you show up? Maybe you should base and, and catch a mid wave, right? So let me show you the second game. So I was like, I watched that game and I was like, what the fuck? I lost like nine waves of farm. Wait, hold on. I'm getting a call. Okay, I don't know what that is. But uh, I lost like eight or nine waves of farm. So in this game, I like overcompensated. Let's fast forward to the mid game. But let's just show you what you can do by 
if you take this idea to the extreme, this is your upper limit, upper bound potential, okay? Which is zero and two, exact same position as a silver game. Zero and two, down a few CS, right? Um, but this time, we're just going to, our team is winning in this game. So it's a lot easier to make decisions. Obviously, uh, if your team is winning and they don't need you to show up, you can literally just giga farm for free. Let's fa put this in fast forward, okay? So remember, one of the habits to help you identify if you should go fight is if you show up, does it change anything? Do you have anything, does your team have anything to play for if you show up, right? If it's not you as they carry. And uh, here, our team <laughs> helped me get a million plates. Million plates and all this CS, all this solo XP, right? Obviously, we don't go mid here, right? We just keep farming, pushing the tower. And we got another wave, right? Um, maybe fast forward a little bit more. Uh, we pick up this wave, right? If I go, here's the thing. If I go help mid here, what do we have to play for? Her, her spearing someone jumping in. She doesn't really need me for that except for an ulti, so we don't need to go, right? So I'm just watching to see if she needs me to ulti. She doesn't, so I just leave, right? And here, we can push mid, we can push top. I go top here because I wanted to farm, right? Zoe's like wanted top as well. We, we try to kill her or something. Um, yeah, we're just going back to our... Uh, we're just doing lane assignments real quick. I think Zoe being mid is not bad since she's she's carrying. She's going to bubble someone and one-shot like Aphelios or Lulu. That's a classic. Here we're making sure we're not dying to Fiora 1v1. We got to check these bushes, right? Making sure she's not going to queue over the wall, something crazy. We see uh, this is just us splitting, right? Making sure we're pushing without dying to Fiora. Ideally, you want to push it all the way into the tower, but there's no way in this picture it's going to happen, right? So here we're doing, we're doing the Grom. The question is, if you go mid, do they? can you do something? And I'm like, ah, uh, maybe. And then it looks like our play is not happening. This is the important part. You go to help. You, you go to help. You hover. This is what we call you hovering. You're, I pushed up. I mean, I, I spent time doing the ground, but we can go hover mid to see if I can help. And if Zoe didn't land bubble and Set can't find ulti, he has no ulti, there's nothing to do mid. So I need to go back top, right? You know, the, the important part is going back to maximize your income. Here I awarded to see if Fiora is going to go uh, to mid or not, right? But the important part is coming back to pick up this farm when uh, nothing is going on, right? That's the important. You don't just in ram guys. Don't, don't in ram me. It doesn't make any sense, right? But uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's watch how you get more than 10 CS a minute from 140 CS at 150 CS at 16 minutes, right? We have more than 10 CS a minute. Uh, Fear is doing some crazy shit. Here, if you show up, can you do something instead of pushing top? Of course, right? We help nearly run her down, right? So we can show up and do something, right? And then the instant this play is over, is there anywhere you can make money? I said, yes. I went top immediately. Because I, I, that's what I wanted to learn from that Silver game is... Can I go maximize my income once our team has secured our position on the map? I'm mean, like, yes. I go push top here instead of mid. This is like the defining moment in the game from, in a, in a philosophy, from a philosophy point of view. Do you go mid here to help them dive or whatever the hell they're doing, playing around Zoe bubble, which I don't know if it's consistent, or do you go push top and get as many waves as possible? This is uh, what I think will be the defining uh the defining philosophy in your gameplay is this decision right here you kill two people what's the decision right right here do we help them dive mid or do we push top and i think from this replay you can tell it's push top because affiliates just clear the wave so there's nothing to do mid but from from a gut reaction point of view i think pushing mid here i mean pushing top here makes a lot of sense right because you're gonna lose this money Remember, like your your job is to get three items, right? As an AD carry, your job is to get as much money as possible so you can carry the game later, right? So I think this to me makes a lot of sense. When your team has won or a team has lost or whatever, is there anywhere you can go make money when you're not needed? I think this makes a lot of sense. We just that, remember those eight waves we lost as Siver, right? This is how you not lose those waves right here, and we can even do Krugs here, which is I think what I attempt to do. Uh, actually, I didn't do cracks because that TF ulti is still on, uh, JK. But uh, we base here, right? So we're not losing any income. Fiora is pushing it back to us. Uh, I don't think she's going to freeze it. We just get the dragon if she does, right? And then, uh, okay, here's another, here's another set of decisions. Do I go top, right? Or do we go to dragon, okay? Because we're fighting for the dragon here, right? So we want to go dragon. We need to be mid or bot here, right? And someone else wants to go top. But I saw Volibear TPing here. So if I show up, do I need to show up to win this dragon fight? Is the question, right? This is this is insane. This is if we if I go to the dragon fight, we will lose that top wave and the tower, right? Potentially. So I'm like, okay, they've prevented them from doing the dragon. 
So I'm going to farm top here. Because if I show up, does anything change? Is a question. Now, I don't really know what the right answer is here, right? In my opinion, Volibear Bear should have matched top, and I push bot, and then we can just 4v4 at the dragon, right? But that's not what happens in solo queue. Sometimes something like this happens. So it's up to you to kind of play around what's actually going on in the game. And yeah, it basically adapts to what the game is happening in the game. I think this makes, to me, this makes sense. I think the old me would just a rep mid or, that, or push bot, but that doesn't make sense. You need to defend the top tower, right? I think to me, this makes a lot of sense where you have to match, you have to stop her from splitting and then say, hey, Fiora is coming for you guys, right? So you just need a preventer from TPing. So that's exactly what we do. We match top. Our team, hap I mean, it, it makes it, the decision making is really easy for us because our team didn't need us. That's the difference is if your team is losing and they needed you, there could be a problem. Our team didn't need us, right? So here, Volibear is coming to gank. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> just seeing what Fiora is doing. And then it's like, oh, okay, Fiora is just dead, lol. You can see uh, <laughs> Volibear, Volibear, yeah. That was some funny Volibear BM, but whatever. We got the push top, and we got the dragon, uh, and we killed top. So it's like, you know, everything worked out in the end. But that's actually just a really interesting thought exercise there is, do you go match top there, or do you go hub dragon? And I think if it's not important to stop the dragon, you should match top there. Because remember, your CS is really important for the scaling, right? If you don't scale, you're not useful as an ADC, unless you're playing like poke various or something, right? So here we get to push so many waves of farm. In fact, you remember when we were 0 and 2 and we were down like a million CS, like 20, 30 CS? We're at 10 CS a minute now, right? Just by pushing this. We even got to push this one. This looks a little bit illegal, but um, we get away, we actually kind of, we get away with it here. Uh, yeah, Zach is throwing up and I'm like actually trying to take Krugs, but you see how like every time there's a decision to be made, we pick the wave. And if you pick the wave every time, you're getting more than 10 CS a minute. Uh, here, in fact, going for red was a mistake. We should have gone top again, I think. Right? Oh, okay, good. I path top after realizing that was a mistake. So here, I mean, let's just fast forward, but let's look at the map here and you see how many waves I'm picking up because my team doesn't need me, right? It's like, it all, it all ends like, uh, it's, not, it's not like a do this every game kind of thing. It's just interesting, interesting to see how I was just splitting the whole game because my team doesn't need me. And if you can get away with this, look how much money you can make, right? Like, look, like, look actually look at my CS. All right, we're just going to fast forward this because I think you guys get the point. But when it's something to be done, like, you know, if they don't need you, you should, you should be maximizing your income so you can carry later, right? So I should be near Baron for sure, but I'm just, like, matching the split here. Or like, 1v1 Fiora or some crazy shit. I don't even know what's going on anymore. But they're parenting without me, <laughs> which is actually insane, right? And I would have pushed bot, but it, sh it turns out that they didn't try and stop the Baron, so they're going to try and gank me. So... I can go home here. I actually should base with my money. I don't know what I'm doing here. But look what happens when you can just greed for all the CS. Right? I'm literally more than 10 CS a minute. Because I chose to farm every time instead of helping the team, pretty much. Or after I helped the team, I went to farm immediately. Right? And the game's over. Right? So it's not like a do this every time you're going to win the game. It's more like a this is what it looks like when this is how much CS you can get when you decide to go pick up the waves instead of helping your team. Right, and the decision to help your team has to be based off of at the cost of your waves. It has to be better than you getting the waves. So, see, look at the CS. Look at my income here at this time. I'm three items at 24 minutes. Okay, that's like the benchmark. Right. So, if you remember the silver game, what are we? Three items at 24 minutes. Yeah, we did not. We are not even close to three items at 24 minutes. Right. So that's just uh, interesting. Interesting idea you can take into your games and see if you should be helping or not helping your team based off of like what's going on, right? So I'll probably make a video on um, deciding how to help your team based off the main character habit. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys uh, some interesting scaling ideas and uh, what you should be doing as an ADC in general, right? It's not, it's not, it's, it's, this video isn't really like a, uh, this video is basically like a while you eat your lunch or something and watch, you know? <laughs> Not really like a specific guide for anything, but more of an example of how you can get more than 10 CS a minute. You know, it's not like uh, my team was, it, my, obviously my team is going to win without me, right? But I, I try to see how can I get to like Uzi levels of CS. In this game, if I had done it correctly, maybe I could have carried 1v9 this game, in fact, right? So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely think about these ideas and watch your games to decide. Look at your decision making, I think, in the mid game. That's really important uh, in, in season 10 to figure out 
if you can carry the game with income or just coin flip the game because you have no money and the team fight is one or one with or without you right so yeah uh hopefully you guys thought it was interesting um i'm gonna get off now uh twitch you guys can say bye or hi i guess we didn't start the video with twitch as saying hi but if you want to see me play games on youtube uh sorry if you want to see me play games uh live i stream on twitch uh and i make my youtube videos on twitch as well uh you can see how many people we have in the chat chat you can you can say bye <laughs> but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and uh maybe put some perspective into what you guys are doing remember the game if you think is just like coin flip game it's not actually a coin flip game look at that silver game it looks like i didn't do that hot imagine if i had 11 cs a minute here we could have carried that last team fight into a victory not even joking like that's that was our win we have a fjord a Sivir, and an oriana and they have like Ezreal and fucking Shivana. That was our win. We, we should have scaled to victory there. So how can you translate these ideas into a victory? Okay. That's your, that's your job, right? So yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.